For those of you that weren't here, we have a Camaro or a Firebird. He has a, a low power complaint on his Firebird and he's doing a quarter mile run on the dyno. I want you guys to listen, listen to this call. So I'll pause it right there. His complaint was low power. This is what he was telling me. And what am I pointing out right here uh, on this is both of my O2 sensors. My bank one sensor one is where my finger is right now. And then my bank two sensor one, which is the top right. What are both of those showing us? Rich. Okay. Rich the whole time we're at wide open throttle. You can hear the car bogging on the, on the dot. And that's what he's saying his complaint is. And I'm saying... Initially, I was looking at it. I'm seeing Rich the whole time. All right. So he. What's that? Did you see black smoke? Yeah, he did. Interesting. All right. Let's let this go for a second. Well, actually, I don't know if there's anything else in here that I wanted to show you other than that. Let me just look real quick. I mean, the car is barely revving up. It shouldn't be doing this. If this is a quarter mile, he's going like 60 miles an hour if you guys saw the dyno. I think I showed it. Yeah. What's that? It's at wide open throttle. Yes, it's been at wide open throttle the whole run. As soon as the, the tree went green, he's been at wide open throttle. So I was looking, you guys understand that I was looking at fuel delivery, right? What's the test I'm doing? O2 wide open throttle, is there enough fuel? He was told that he needs a fuel pump by the guys down in diesel, they checked it said he needs a fuel pump. What's that test tell us right there? It says fuel delivery's fine. That's not our issue. That's what that says initially, okay? And the, the bogging on the, the um, dyno is what we're noticing, and this is what he's claiming his problem is, uh, although he, he said it's not as bad on the road. I think at this point in time, we're, 
really concerned about a lot of different things. We're concerned about uh, restricted exhaust. We're concerned about the way the engine's breathing. Remember the tests that we've been doing, the volumetric efficiency test and things like that. So, but everyone with me on what I'm saying here, that this is not a fuel delivery problem. Our O2s are rich the whole time we're at wide open throttle. You guys remember um, the volumetric efficiency test. We use our peak, our peak, um, peak RPM, peak mass airflow. We take intake air temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, right? So I did that on this car. What do we see? 80 80% 80, 80 volumetric efficiency so I'm thinking about restricted exhaust I'm thinking about air intake restriction things like that we're worried about the mass airflow or we really weren't because our O2 is rich at wide open but what's this telling me about how this engine's breathing it's breathing fine so why is it so low on power on the on the machine ultimately what that en ended up being there's an issue with the machine it's loading the car too much. The bog on the machine is from the dyno. Uh, one of the sensors were faulty and only one side was loading and the whole calibration of the whole thing is off. So that's what the bog was on the rack. But he still has a complaint. On the road, he's feeling a lack of power. Uh, granted, the dyno intensified that as far as that went. But we, we did the run again. After seeing this, I said, well, I want to look at it again. In fact, it was some of the data. Let me show this clip first. What do you notice about the O2s the whole time? Again, we're wide open for all. You see the dip, though. Did everybody see that dip? Yeah. Um, I just attributed that initially. I attributed that to a first to second gear shift. So watch it again. At that point, you'll hear it right where it shifts. Let me go back. All right. So to my eye, it looked like that drop in the O2 was during the shift. And I'm thinking about other cars that I've seen and... This isn't necessarily at wide open throttle, but I absolutely have seen vehicles between shifts do torque limiting, which gives you a nice smooth shift. So if you're just normal acceleration on an on a automatic transmission, uh, a one, two, or two, three shift, it is not uncommon to momentarily see O2's drop lean. Uh, I don't know if the computer's cut an injection pulse or whatever for the shift, but you can have that. So, that's where my head was initially, and I wasn't considering, we're at wide open throttle, so we certainly shouldn't be cutting injection pulse between shifts, but I missed that, okay? I missed that initially, and then I, I uh, when I was sitting in here and I was talking to uh, Cap and Mark and all the other guys that were in here, we started focusing in on that area, so let's go back to that. This is the scan data capture of this run. And that's the area here. All right, what are we looking at? Watch this again. Um, the top is my RPM, so you can see the RPM climbing. Um, throttle position, we're at 100% throttle. You can see the, the O2s. Okay, there's bank one, sensor one. There's bank two, sensor one. We are rich initially as we're initially climbing we're rich and then we see a lean pocket right here same thing we're rich then we see a lean pocket then we go rich again on both of these what is this lean condition we're looking at here um, initially I was thinking it was in the shift area and there, there is a one two shift in here somewhere that you can see if you look at where's my math I need my trims in here right now let's get my math in here Let's get my map. Barrow. Uh, math. One of them I, I was able to see the the one two shift. I don't remember which the barrow? No, it shouldn't be with the barrow. You see the barrow did change as we're we have some alt alt 
alterations or some changes in the barrow because we are at wide open throttle. Remember the computer updates that. Um, in any case, look at look at my RPM. Oh, here's your one two. Duh. This would be this would be peak first gear, right here. What's the RPM drop here? This is second gear, and that's where it started to have the sound of a a bog almost. Question so far. That's that's the shift. So I wasn't too. I'm not too worried about that guy in this area. Maybe this second dip. But I absolutely, guys, I absolutely am worried about this one. Why? Because I'm in first gear, I'm still accelerating, or Brian was, right? The RPM, or yes, RPM is climbing. What do we see right about frame? Kind of tough to see exactly, these are offset, but in between frame 455 and 460, so 455, 460, so right in here, right? What do we have? We have a lean condition. I missed it initially. Why are we lean at that point and we weren't later has to do with what? It's not a misfire. It's not a misfire. I am at wide open throttle. You guys need to understand this. I'm at wide open throttle the whole time. I keep saying I'm at. Brian was at wide open throttle the whole time. This is, well look at the TPS from frame four 45, just after frame 445, so right here, my throttle went wide open. The rest of the time, we're at wide open throttle. So what is happening with our fuel at that RPM, we are dropping lean. Why at that RPM are we dropping lean? We have a fuel delivery problem, and that delivery problem, what you're about to see, I'll show you, it's a fuel pressure issue is more pronounced at those higher RPMs because the volume loss from those injectors is very high at that point in time. We're at wide open. I wish I, I had the injector pulse up here. But at wide open throttle with more frequent losses of fuel from the injectors firing is when the fuel pump showed its ugly face. Is that what you'd say? Head? <laughs> What's that? It's not a bad injector. A bad injector would be a single cylinder misfire. Here's what the problem is. And so this is our fuel pressure measurement. After I saw, you guys understand, after I saw that lean pocket, what was I thinking? Fuel delivery. The diesel department told him he needed a fuel pump. I'm confirming that. The nice thing about having a dyno is we can leave the car there. It's a lot safer than test driving the car with a fuel pressure gauge taped to the windshield. We're sitting about 35 PSI on this vehicle. Wow. Normal fuel pressure for this car, I don't know, I never looked it up. But uh, these are these typical return type systems with a vacuum regulator, 35 to 45 is common, 30 to 40 on these systems. Someone can maybe check that real quick while I'm talking, 97 uh, Firebird fuel pressure, just Google it. Does that say when? Q1 engine off? Yeah, it should say when for that number though. Key on, key on engine off is what? 45, okay. That sounds about right. So I'm at 35. Engine is idling. There is a lot of vacuum at idle. How much vacuum is with key on engine off? None. So with no vacuum, your pressure is going to be higher. At wide open throttle, our pressure should be higher. This should raise... 6 to 10 PSI is the number I use as far as idle to wide open throttle. This pressure should go up as soon as we hit the pedal to the floor. This is not a bad pressure reading for idle, so we're clear. Okay, but watch it whenever we accelerate. Let me go back. I want you to see that again. Did it raise first? Yeah. Yes, it did. That's what we want to see. Didn't raise as high as we our spec is, right, but it's about 40, and listen to the RPM, watch the pressure gauge. And that right there shows you what was going on with our... They should have continued increasing pressure. It should have yeah. continued to increase, and it should, have it should have stayed there. It shouldn't have changed. Once we went wide open, it should have went to 42 or 43. 
The spec says 45, but um, and it should have stayed there the whole time. So what was happening is the lean condition you're seeing here that I just pointed out is when my RPMs were real high, and then when it shifted gears, our RPM is lower, right? We hit a maximum of about 5,000, that's 5,395. I'm not sure exactly where we are here. Um, actually, I, I can tell you. RPM is 3,300. Where did we start dropping pressure? About 4,800, 4,400. So what's going on here, again, is fuel delivery. Where were we after the shift? Where were we before the shift? Initial start, wide open throttle increased to about 40 PSI. Then as RPM was climbing, did you see the pressure dropping? We dropped down to about 28. And then when the shift occurred, what happened to fuel pressure? Came back up to about 35, why? We've been at wide open throttle the whole time. It's not vacuum affected, it's fuel delivery volume from the fuel pump. It cannot keep up with those injectors at that RPM. That's what is wrong with this vehicle. The bog though, let's be clear about the bog, is what? Yeah, he's got a bog on the road. It's a little bit low power, especially higher RPMs. And his complaint was over four grand, he had a low power condition. Does that match what we're seeing right here? Like, look at the there's the point right before the O2 drop lean is right there. That's 4,100 RPM. Pretty, pretty accurate description from Brian as far as what he had on the road. We missed it initially, but definitely lean. There's 4,800 RPM. Lack of fuel. Lack of fuel. The bog on the machine, though, let's be clear, we have an issue with the dyno. The reason it wouldn't rev over 50 mile an hour on a quarter mile run is the dyno was loading that vehicle too much. We had enough fuel delivery at 35 PSI. I realize it's low, even though we're rich in this area. Our, I should say, even though our fuel pressure was low at 35, 35 was still enough to provide me with a fuel delivery that gave my O2s a rich signal and I missed it initially. This was a fuel delivery problem, just like Matt's what was the key with this? Key with this was looking at the O2s at wide open throttle. The other, the other nice piece to this is as we initially missed this and we saw the O2s reading rich, rich here too, um, that's when we did the VE test, the volumetric efficiency test. I'll get better at that in the future. You guys follow what I'm doing on YouTube. You watch some more videos on VE testing and I'll show you how to use it and, and have case studies and variables. I'm hoping to show restricted exhausts and I'm hoping to show restricted intakes and have all those case studies down the road where we can use this. I did this VE test because I was concerned about engine breathing. Does everyone understand why? O2s looked rich to me. I was worried about a plugged exhaust. Uh, and that's when we also did our MAP test too. Remember the MAP wide open throttle test that we've been talking about. Um, I really thought that this map could be used as well for uh, locating a restricted exhaust. And I'm not sure because I haven't seen one yet, but if you think about the theory behind a restricted exhaust where you have excessive back pressure, what happens when the valve over overlap occurs? When your exhaust valve opens at the same time that your intake valve is still open, where is this excessive pressure going to end up in the, in the intake. So if we have a restricted exhaust, I believe we can use the map for that. I haven't done this before, but just thinking about this map and how we're using it for air intake restrictions, if you look where we are on, on this map sensor, we're pretty much, what's our barrow? Barrow's at 30.4 when we started. My current number, so I'm looking right, looking right here. As we're accelerating, if this had a plugged exhaust, what would we see happening here? I think what we would see happening in this area is we would see a pressure rise in the manifold. And so if this is accurate and I can start using this, that changes everything as far as how I'm checking back pressures, which is putting a gauge in the exhaust where the O2 is. I just don't think it's necessary. If you have a MAP sensor, 
then we should be able to use this. And I want to prove it later, but that's the plan moving forward is finding a, my next restricted exhaust case study, I'm going to be looking at a map sensor at wide open. I just think that I should be able to identify it looking at this map theory-wise. What, what are you guys' thoughts on that? I think it absolutely would. If pressure is high enough that you feel a power loss problem, where is the power loss coming from? It's coming from the inability of the engine to breathe, right? The excessive back pressure. These cars with a plugged exhaust, they won't go over 30 miles per hour, wide open throttle. And I've, seen, I've checked back pressure just in the shop and no load back pressure testing at three grand, you're nine PSI of back pressure. Imagine what you are on the road under a load. I think you absolutely would see this in the intake. The only variable here would be the map sensor and how it's calibrated. Can it actually read um, higher than atmospheric? So uh, atmospheric sea level reading on a Barrow is around 30, right? This 30.4 number that we're looking at here. It wouldn't be much higher than that. What I don't know is on maps, typical map sensors, non-turbo maps, is what is the highest that will the computer is calibrated to read it? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's one bar, but that's our atmospheric pressure, and so that's a variable. But can this map sensor at least produce a reading of thirty point four as far as the calculations go? This remember this barrel reading right here is coming from the map sensor. Okay. So if I had a restricted exhaust, I'm saying in here, I would at least see a rise in that area. It might not be much because the map can't read any higher because it's not calibrated for that. But all I'm telling you guys is I believe that this is a legitimate test to find a restricted exhaust. And this was helpful doing this for me after we did the VE test. And after I looked at the map, I said, what? about Brian's car, I said, I want to see that scan data run again, and that's when we caught the O2 drop and lean at the higher RPM number. Bad fuel pump. I say bad fuel pump, I shouldn't say that. Um, it's a fuel delivery issue, low pressure, that's either a restricted filter, power or ground problem to the pump, okay, or faulty pump. And what I have done in Repairing these vehicles is I'm just changing the pump and filter after I make sure I have a good power and ground. When you get to the point of low pressure from a plugged filter, if the filter was the problem, you've already overworked that pump for tens of thousands of miles. So you killed it already. I had a customer years ago that worked truck that came in, same kind of symptoms, and I ended up changing his fuel filter and fixing his problem. But he came back two months later on the hook with a bad fuel pump. And, and he actually MF'd me. I was saving him money, but to him, I didn't save him money because he had to miss another day of work. So from that point forward, what did I? What have I always done with low pressure problems from plugged fuel filters? It's getting a pump too, just not, just not fooling around. So, to each his own on how you want to do that. If that's my car and that differential has to come out to change that fuel pump, I'm absolutely putting a fuel filter in it first and retesting it. Wouldn't you agree? That would be a good plan of attack. Uh, there's other things we could do, which is a deadhead test, pinch the return line, watch for max pressure, see what the pump can produce. You know, there's other tests we could do, but definitely fuel delivery was our issue with this uh, Firebird. The, the bog was the machine. Get used to this wide open throttle O2 stuff, guys. Get used to this VE stuff. Start paying attention to your map sensor. Uh, remember the debates uh, that we had on Sonoma's vehicle and then um, Jared we did on his truck with um, Noah right and then you guys we were seeing about a one uh, inch of mercury change from initial wide open to the rev on the map and I think we're seeing the, the same kind of thing here as far as that number initial is 29.8 there's 29.5 there's 29.8 29.2 29.8 nine right and so pretty good pretty good breathing on this engine I don't see any kind of air intake restriction that was the point there but again I think we can use this for restricted exhaust and I'll keep you guys updated on that okay so keep paying attention to what what we're doing any any questions before we wrap up this part and start into our our next chapter anything at all on the 
fire turf. No? Okay. Okay, boys and girls, we're doing the uh, dyno runs again. New fuel pump was installed in this uh, Firebird or Camaro, or whatever it was. Uh, I want to be clear on one thing before I take you over to the dyno. Uh, the second gear pulls on this where the car wasn't going past 50 or 60 mile per hour was an issue with the dyno, not the car in the lean condition. Uh, so we have the dyno fixed and we have the fuel pump replaced. We're going to look at after O2 sensor millivolts, wide open throttle. We'll look at our VE again, really not necessary. Shouldn't change the breathing of the engine with a fuel, uh, faulty fuel pump, but we'll just get a couple of after readings and update you guys. Pretty sweet setup we have. We just knocked this wall out for the school for uh, the dyno. And um, I don't know a whole, whole lot about it yet, but it is a Mustang dynamometer. Let's get the runs. Just, uh, guys, just want to be real uh, clear on what I'm showing here. You're not in the screen tab, you're good. Um, we, we weren't really focused on the dyno for the before runs. I'll show you guys what's going on here. We'll do some more dyno stuff in the future. I'll get you up to speed on how to use it. I don't even know how to use it myself yet. Our primary goal here, show you the after O2 readings at wide open throttle and you know, you'll get to see the car on the dyno a little bit. I'll get you focused on the scan tool and the fuel pressure gauge at different times. Thanks for the light change there. Uh, let's get on it. What, what are we doing right now, Cap? A calibration? We're calibrating engine RPM to this computer, to the dyno. Oh, gotcha. Do you want my RPM on the scan tool? Would that help us? To compare the two? I don't know if it would or not. Just grab my RPM for you there.
want to show you guys these after. After runs of the, what is this thing, a Firebird? Yeah, Trans Camaro, Trans Firebird. Trans Okay, definitely easier to see here than it was on the screen out there. Um, we really want to focus on our RPM, throttle angle, numbers, and uh, let me mess around with my cursors here. Be a little bit tricky on this touch screen. Look at this second run. We could do well. We could limit the pits too to see more of the screen. But if you look at the the engine um, RPM, where is it at? Uh, RPMs up top. Why is it showing me 183,420 RPM? Do you guys <laughs> see that? So my scale's off on that top. So we have to, man, I don't think I can rescale that, can I? There had to be some kind of a glitch there. That's weird. No, that's not cool. I mean, do you see how narrow the graph is now? Or how wide it is, like 114 RPM to 183,000. I can't see my RPM. Well, you can see the current number is 5,095. You see it? So where's my TPS? Let's look at that. So from right there, there's the beginning. Look at this frame right here. Throttle position, I'm at wide open. What do you notice about my bank two sensor, one oxygen sensor? And my bank one sensor, one oxygen sensor. What do you guys see? We see a rich condition the full time that we're at wide open throttle. So even at the high RPM numbers um, as we climb, so watch this current number here, even though the graph is off, so 3596, let's get this up to the highest RPM. This is gonna be when our fuel delivery is the most because the injectors are firing more frequently. Like even at the peak RPM of this, notice our O2s are still full rich. And uh, what you didn't see, which will, will be in the final production of this, which is the fuel pressure gauge, we were about 40 at idle, and uh, it went up to about 46, I think, might be a little bit higher than that, uh, at wide open throttle. And I was watching that gauge, too, to make sure at peak RPM that that fuel pressure wasn't dropping at all, and it was not. It was steady the, the whole time. What's the power run, what you just did? Uh, again, our after results on this thing um, are a little bit different because we had issues with the dyno. The first runs, the dyno itself was a uh, it was miscalibrated. The one sensor was off, so some of that was misleading in how it sounded beforehand because it was like bogging and not accelerating. That was because the dyno was messed up, not because we were running lean. It still should have accelerated, uh, it not the way it was it was a combination of two things before something else too that we were doing before if you remember is we were looking at map sensor for air intake restrictions you guys remember that um, our barrow you can see is 30.1 and um, when we when we were at wide open throttle let's see what our lowest map number is look at this current number right here uh, it looks like our lowest map 27.7 um, so a slight slight vacuum compared to atmospheric at wide open throttle and again I was telling you guys I don't know what's acceptable and what's not I'm gonna call this known good we've done a few you guys helped me with uh, Jared's truck right there's a 5.3 that we did and it had the similar readings where we had about one inch of mercury um, off so this is a little bit more than that isn't it 27.7 Barrows 30.1 started at 
looking at these min max numbers but anyway um, as far as doing volumetric efficiency we can throw those numbers in here real quick what I need is my my peak mass airflow where's my mass airflow right here peak mass airflow is 246.5 so let's get to that point it was not on this run was it my peak on this run was 232 um, Wait, before I move away from this, any anybody have any questions on why the O2 dropped lean right here? So after after the full rich area, notice the second the throttle was let off, we went from wide open throttle back down to idle. So looking at this top number up here, what event is occurring in here is a D-cell fuel cutoff event. So we shut the injectors off completely. That's why the O2 is dropped lean. That is a completely normal condition. Let me find our peak, our peak mass airflow run. It's one of these, two forty-six point five. Let's see if this one had it. This was the first run. Nope, two thirty-two. He was doing some weird. He was doing some weird stuff in this one. In this last one, um, oh, those were the gears shifting, wasn't it? That's why the mass airflow readings look like that. The RP See, that's where we need our RPM. The RPM numbers, we could just use these peaks probably. But um, 246.5, there's your peak, and there's my RPM. So we we'll use those numbers. Let me write those down. And that was this that's the peak RPM of the second gear shift. He first gear, second gear, third gear, that's what you're looking at on those pulls. I guess that was maybe his quarter mile run. 246.50. This is my math. My um, RPM, even though you can't see it, is five thousand five fifty-eight. And then again my barrow. Uh, looks like barrow updated <laughs> twenty-nine point eight wide open throttle updates. Those shifts, those slight shifts in barrel are interesting. Intake air at that point in time is 77 degrees. Do we need anything else? That should be it. Let's go to the calculator real quick. These numbers really shouldn't change. So if you're doing VE testing and you have a low power condition and your volumetric efficiency shows you good, which we had good numbers before, um, fuel pressure would match that. I don't expect these numbers to be any different as far as our volumetric efficiency goes. It was somewhere between 77 and 80 percent when we put these numbers in. What engine was that again? On? Is it a 5.7? Yeah. So our peak RPM, 5,558. Our math is 246.50 our temperature was 77 and our barrow is 29.8 okay if you guys remember I didn't put the humidity in I don't think it matters that much um, what's the humidity today 70%. it is 70 percent right now see if that changes that at all yeah a little bit 80% 80, 80 volumetric efficiency. We had that number beforehand. So uh, I guess a, a final word on this VE testing is we can use it as a guide for um, restricted exhausts, restricted intakes, mass airflow problems compared to low fuel pressure. And what we had on this car was a low fuel pressure problem. Think about it, guys. It does make sense that our VE would be normal when you have a fuel pressure problem because it's just the engine breathing how does the engine breathe is that going to be affected by a low fuel pressure problem maybe if it gets to the point where you're you're limited in your rpm hear me out for a second it, let's say that we can't hit the 55 58 let's say we could only get to 4500 rpm because we there was such a severe lack of fuel that we couldn't get there what other number is going to be low your mass airflow is going to be low so it's proportional in other words, your VE is still going to show good in that scenario. And what this test allows me to do now for myself, one of the main things I'm going to use this for, 
is in fuel delivery, what I've always said is this. If you have O2s that are lean the whole time you're at wide open throttle compared to being rich the whole time at wide open throttle, like these are now, right? Look at the O2, full rich. If you have a full lean O2 at wide open throttle, I've always said it's either a low fuel pressure problem or a mass airflow problem. Those are the two main ones. And then what I would have to do, now there are other variables, but what I would have to do is I would have to check fuel pressure next or go after the mass airflow next to figure out which one of the two it is. And guys, what I'm telling you with this VE test is I can eliminate one or the other if I just punch these numbers into this calculator. Low O2 millivolts, good VE. What direction are we going? Fuel pressure. Low O2 millivolts, bad VE. What direction am I going? Mass airflow. You guys follow? All right, there's variables to this, of course. There's other things I need to learn. So some nice additional info with the VE testing. Uh, it's going to help me for sure. Just save time. Cool? Any questions on anything we did? The final production of this will be good because I'll have the fuel pressure readings in there, the before, the after, and you guys will, some of you guys will be on YouTube too, which would be cool. Thanks for being on camera with me or being here part of this with me. That was cool. All right.